morning everyone Miranda Patron here I am just gonna do something a little different today I found this cute little stone which is almost perfectly circle so ordinarily I'd be like let's do a mandala right from the center and work our way out but I think this one just because it has this graded edge we're gonna do like a mandala flower from the side and work our way up to petals because I just think that'll look neat so that's what we're going to paint on this stone today. And this stone is about, I want to say three inches. Let's measure it. Be sure. Yeah, three and a quarter, I guess, inches. But we don't have to find a center. It's just so you have an idea about the size stone that I'm doing this design on. Um, and I'm going to be using my brushes today. I do have a couple of soft round acrylics to kind of help out. A lot of times with the regular dot mandalas, I can do it all with one of the angled paint brushes like this. But I think it would, would help if we use start using some of the bigger soft acrylic brushes. Um, also, I generally use deco art paint, which I have some of here today. And so we're going to pick out some colors and get started on this cool flower. I know generally like the pollen in the center of a flower is yellow, but I feel like doing something a little edgy and different today, so I'm actually going to start with black for the center. It'll be a half a center. We'll do a, a semicircle kind of, to start off our little mandala flower here. And you can see I'm going to show you with some water here that we're just going to take our black and do a little arc. And you can kind of plan out your design this way too to see do, how big do you want to do this and then maybe a row of dots and then maybe another little design or see how far out you want to get before you do petals, that type of thing. And that way you can kind of practice before you really get going on the stone and just give you an idea of what you want to do. I think a lot of people too I've seen are doing little paw prints that would look cute on this too but I think I'm going to go for the flower. And we'll see how that goes. If you are somebody who likes to have guidelines, something that you might find helpful also is taking a compass and just kind of gauging how big you want your first semicircle to be. And you can even rest it on the table or whatever. And I'm going to rest on the edge of the stone just to kind of give you an idea, but you can also draw a semicircle and that would help you kind of get an idea for where you want to put that and start your design like I just did it with water but now you can see there's a line here that you could start your design and that kind of gives you some guideline to fill in and once you start your center it's a lot easier to keep the symmetry um, if you've already got your center down <laughs> So since I have that there, I'll just paint in my black here. And I'm using the Deco Art black. It's just a matte black. It's not any of the glossy or metallic enamels or anything like that. I still got some water in my brush, but that will dry. And you just do even gentle strokes so you don't have many brush marks when it dries. And this, like I said, is a soft round acrylic brush. And every brand has different sizes that I've noticed, especially if you get just cheap ones from China or something like that. Um, but generally I think they measure the bristles. So this one, the bristles, let's see, let me take measure here. So you can have an idea what I'm using. These are half inch bristles, but this says size three. So, but they're half inch bristles, half inch long. All right, I 
think next I'm going to use some white. And I'm just going to do some dots around the mandala center here to start our design. And like I said before, if you're somebody who feels more confident, if you have lines, then you can always measure and find your center here. I just kind of eyeball it, but you can find what your center would be of your circle and then measure the width here to find your middle. I think sometimes it's easier, especially when stones aren't completely round, to just kind of eyeball the center where it should be. But start there in the center and then work your way out to the sides. And just kind of keep the spacing about the same. And with the brushes, you don't have to reload the paint as many times and you can still keep a same size dot. But if you're working with dotting tools, like uh, the nail dot tools or punch sets and, and things like that, then you're going to have to reload your paint more often to keep the same size dot. And this still is a Princeton angled spot detailer, the brush that I'm using. Um, it's just an older one, so the tip is not as nice a point. It's a little more dull. So that's just why the dots are a little bit bigger than they will be. And with I have other ones here where the point is still good. And I'll probably use that for smaller ones. But I also have um, brushes from US Art Supply that my husband got me for my birthday which have liner brushes that are pretty awesome so those are great for the finer details also. Um, I was told that Target also sells an eyeliner brush that's angled through ELF, e -L -F, um, the company and they're only three dollars so if you are looking for angled brushes and Princeton is too pricey or they're out of stock which is what I hear quite often now <laughs> um, that they're out of stock um, you can go to Target and I'm not sure if it's Target Online has them but I know they definitely have them in the stores because I see them all the time so you can go to your local Target and get an angled brush as well Alright, so I think I'm going to start in between with the smaller dots using a soft coral, again from DecoArt. And I'll just use one of the liner brushes to do small dots in between the white ones that we just did. So see the space in between here on the white ones. I'm just going to do small, small dots in between all those. Sometimes too you can wait till the end of your piece or till these are thoroughly dry and come back in with a liner brush and go in between. I'm just going to do it as I go for this one. I think it'll be okay. But also, so you know on the video, I'm pausing in between just to let these dry just a bit so that my colors don't run together and you can get the dots decently close. Um, that way the colors won't run into one another. So let them kind of dry. You'll see the outer edge get a little bit flatter. And then you'll know that it's a little bit drier. So they're not going to run into each other as much. If you get too close. And I am working without a background here. Which in the past in my other videos. Um, I've stated it's a lot easier to remove the paint. Or hide it. Or fix up the... Uh, unintended dot <laughs> um, if you have a background because you can just kind of scrape off the excess paint and then paint over it um, with this however I'm not using a background because I really like this stone so I want to let some of it show through um, but it's if you make a mistake on these you can use like a q-tip and alcohol and kind of scrub at it or I also have various tools that are decently sharp um, like the end of a tack and scrape the paint off or I've used the end of my compass before to scrape the paint off because that's pretty sharp um, but just to give you an idea um, letting it dry and being patient kind of allows for you to make less of the unintended um, mistakes I guess so to speak but 
I like to say there's not a mistake because you can fix it into some kind of new design, but it's either a learning experience or a new design, you know? So, all right, so that was the bright coral, and I have next a really nice bright salmon from Decorart again. <clears throat> And I'm going to go back to the bigger brush just to make a few larger dots. And I'm going to do those in between the coral that we just made and over your white. And just a little bit bigger. So I'm kind of getting bigger as we go out. And those coral ones were a little bit smaller dots, so they dried a lot faster, so I didn't I didn't wait to go here, just so you know. If they're really small, they tend to dry pretty quick. Oh, and I forgot one over here. And one thing I showed in my last video talking about unintended um, designs is I had accidentally, I was rushing and blended or had two dots run into one another and rather than go through the effort to scrub the whole design because it, it was, there was not a background, I was just going to scrub all the paint off, um, what I did was just turn it into a different design which I can show you here. I'll do it with the next round. And I'm going to use peony pink first. So I'm making it a lot bigger here. So with, if you're using dotting tools, you're going to want to go to your larger, larger sized stapling ends. Okay, so I think these are sufficiently dry enough to show this now. Um, so we did the paint, pink peony paint here. And what I had done before was I made a mistake and put them too close together so they ran into one another. And it was on a stone where I wasn't doing a background. So it was difficult for me to think of, well, how can I make this into the design? So what I ended up doing was taking a darker color or you could take lighter or even the same color it might look a little different but that the same color might blend in too much but a contrasting color too um, and put it in between the dots so that they're actually touching and it kind of looks like chain link so I'm going to show you it now I'm going to put another color in between the spaces as if I had made that mistake because I really like the design how it comes out 
I'm going to use this wild rose pink and we're going to go on top in between the gaps of the peony pink that we just did. And it's a little bit smaller dot too, so you're not overpowering the dot that you already have there. But you're just going to make a little connection in between the two like that. My stone is a little angled, so that started to drip a little more than I wanted it to, but you can see on these other ones how it comes along, making a little link to the next one so that it's all connected. So like I said, that one started to drip too much, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And I just love the pattern that it makes. Kind of symbolic with the connectedness. But see, so not everything you do has to be a mistake. It can turn into something else just as beautiful. I'm just going to tuck a stone under here because this one is angled. It's a good thing about having rocks all around <laughs> to help it stay a little more balanced here so that it doesn't run down into the rest of my design. There. And as you can see in the background, I, I'm not a big fan of watching paint dry, so I always have multiple designs going, <laughs> multiple pieces going all at once. Alright, next up I have a deep magenta. I'm going to kind of space these ones out a little bit farther so we can kind of make the design a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll skip every other in between space. So skip this one, go to this one. Skip that one, go to the next one. Skip that one, go to this one. Okay, so I'm going to start tying in some of my colors now and go back to the white. I'm just using one of the liner brushes now. I'll just do some little ring of dots around each of these.
Okay, so the next ring I'm just going to go back to that bright coral, the light, light coral that we had. Using some of the similar colors that you've started off in your design also kind of helps it be a little more cohesive and you bring the design, connect the design a little bit together because that way you have your colors throughout being used. That way the palette you kind of started off with, you carry it out through the, most of the piece. Now I think I'll go back to the bright salmon. And one thing you'll see because of the shape of the stone is not uniform. Some spaced out more than others. So you kind of have to gauge if you're going to add in the next part of your design. Make sure it's going to fit around all the pieces that you want to put it on. So I'll do one more ring of this pink. The dark um, peony pink. I think I said salmon. I didn't mean to say salmon. I meant peony that we started with. Oh no. Yeah, I want salmon. Sorry. <laughs> the bright salmon. Because that was the next one we did here.
This one is Apple Barrel, and it's blue bonnet, but it's this color that I haven't been able to mix, so I am going to use from Apple Barrel to do the next round. It's like a little bit of tint of purple in the blue, kind of like a periwinkle. I just haven't been able to get that exact color like I want, so... Next is a tropical blue. And I think we're going to go fairly large over our little orange arches here. I think the first ring around these will be coastal blue. And on these ones I'm kind of making the dot at the top a little bit bigger and letting the paint run out as I go around so the dots get smaller. Um, this will help us ultimately to give kind of a petal shape because it's going to be bigger up here and then work our way down and around. So same with your dotting tools. You get a bigger dot at the top and just let the paint run out off your tool and that will make the dots get smaller and downgrade as you go around. So it's kind of a gradient from large to small. This last dot is actually off the edge, so I'm only going to bring the dots around the semicircle. The 
But that would that is what makes that design unique to this stone. It's because you just probably can do your design on the one stone you have. It makes each one unique. It's pretty cool. I'm going to go back now to this tropical blue for the next ring. And do the same idea again where you do a dot, uh, <laughs> a larger dot at the top. <clears throat> I actually have a little too much paint on my brush to go around to do the smaller ones, so I'm going to drop some of the paint off onto the other sections to where I wanted more paint anyway. And that way we'll have enough off the brush, then you can start to do the smaller dots around. Also too, you can always just dot it on your paper towel or on something else to kind of relieve it from having too much paint. See, I started off with too much on that one. So I'll drop it off over there and then come back to do the smaller ones here. It's gonna look a little crazy when I do the sped up version of this for the time lapse, but that's okay. Also, too, if you don't have enough, you can always grab from these dots. I think I'll go around these blues with our white.
right. Like a little black. Like I said, I like to carry the colors throughout the piece. So we'll just toss a little couple black dots in here. And then I think maybe for some kind of little leafy, leaf-like appearance, we're going to use some turquoise and some ocean green. Oh, here's my turquoise, and I'll have to find my ocean green, but I think we'll do a couple of... Do I want to do a broad stroke down? Maybe a couple comma strokes here to just kind of give it some movement, like leaf-like movement to it. Okay, so I'll just take my angled brush here because it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. We're going to go thickest at the top and then bring it down around the white dots that we just created. Like that. Just thicker at the top when you're going to push down a little harder at the top too to get that thickness. And then as you come around your design, just start letting up on the paintbrush. So thicker at the top, come around and start to let up a little bit. My paint didn't ca carry all the way down, so. Thicker at the top, around, and gently let up on your brush. I think I need one more. Can I fit one more over here? Maybe not. We'll try it. We'll prop it up on a stone here. See if I can sneak one more right along here. Okay, so now I think I'll go with the ocean green next to it. Then also, if you want to create a little bit of depth to your design also, you can do top dots. So I like to take either a darker or a lighter color to kind of highlight the ones that you've already used, or you could use completely different colors and it would create a really colorful design. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is spa blue. 
for the top dots on our blue, and then I'll do a lighter purple for the top dots on our magenta. Just to kind of give it a little 3D effect. First is the spa blue. And then Decor has this nice, it's their Americana line, has a wild orchid. I'm going to use that wild orchid on top of the magenta that we did earlier, now that those are dry. So this is, at this point, when your design's pretty decently dry, is when you can go back and add in other accents. Now you could have left it as is, too, as it was. And it would have looked nice as well. So I think too, I'm going to carry a little more of the black down in here. I don't know why, I just it felt like it needed it. And sometimes I have to stop myself. Sometimes it is possible, to, I think, maybe to overwork a piece a little too much um, to where your design starts to get lost. But every now and then, you know, you'd, sometimes it just needs a little something more. I've had people say, wow, it looked great, and then you just started adding more, and then I thought it, it still looked great, and then, oh, I wouldn't have thought to do that, and... It happens a lot where you just keep adding to it and it's something you wouldn't have thought would look good or you wouldn't have thought of before or if you had made the design in the past then adding to it the next time just to kind of see what it looks like. <clears throat> it just makes it fun. Well there's our little flower stone for today. I hope you had fun doing this with me. And if you like my videos, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see other videos that I have, I do use dotting tools and other tools and other videos to try to vary it up a little bit to help people who are using other kinds of tools. Um, I also have ones to kind of help you decide what paints to use for dotting um, or even short clips to just kind of show certain designs. So please feel free to go check those out and share them with others. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you again soon.